Welcome to SCS Engineers series of mini webinars focused on carbon sequestration and deep well injection. In today's presentation, Ms. Lindsay Hawksworth will talk about the importance of site characterization and groundwater protection during injection of carbon dioxide. Lindsay is a geologist with, S with the SES team and she's located in central Illinois. Lindsay has a bachelor's of science from the Illinois State University and is experienced in groundwater sampling and monitoring permitting, and field services management. Lindsay, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie, for the introduction. I'd like to first review some key factors why it's important to protect groundwater. Drinking water, probably the first thing that comes to mind. Groundwater is the main source of drinking water within the United States. Agriculture, a steady supply of groundwater is required to meet crop and livestock requirements. Ecosystems. Groundwater supports springs, rivers, wetlands, and lakes, which are also supporting the flourish of plants and animals. Industry. The groundwater can be utilized to clean, heat, cool, and generate steam, or generally become part of the industrial product itself. Now, moving on to the site characterization, let's first discuss what this is for Class 6 permit. As described in EPA's guidance, site characterization demonstrates that a proposed project site has a suitable injection zone to receive the carbon dioxide and confining zone that will prevent fluid movement out of the injection zone. Information gathered for site characterization is also required of the owner or operator to submit with a Class 6 permit application before authorization of well construction and operation. Perhaps you may be asking, how do I know if my site is suitable for deep well injection or if deep well injection is suitable for you? Well, SES is already prepared for that question. Casey Garber has already prepared a webinar within our series of mini webinars assessing feasibility that can help you determine that, but we can touch back on that at the end. How can the site characterization help an owner or operator when it comes to protecting the groundwater? So specifically here today, we are diving into EPA's guidance on site characterization. This guidance will also help you determine if your class six walls are operating as permitted, detecting risks that may lead to the endangerment of the groundwater, and determine re-evaluations of the area of review where potential threats may exist. EPA's guidance lists requirements that are to be submitted for a permit. They're organized into three sections. Activities performed prior to well construction. These are simply the activities required to perform before any construction can happen. Data synthesis for demonstration of site suitability. While all the data that is gathered may not be entirely useful on their own, synthesizing the data will paint a broader picture of the proposed site uh, while answering any other questions throughout the process and activities performed prior to well operation. Finally, these are the activities required to be performed before any injection can be authorized. So let's take those requirements and the information collected and put them into perspective on how it's protecting the groundwater. The regional geology, hydrogeology, and structural geology requires information such as topographical maps, cross sections describing lithologies, depths, groundwater flow patterns, and regional faults that may transcend confining zones. This is painting the picture of the geologic history of the project area, looking at subsurface formations on a regional scale, but also including the targeted injection zone and confining zones. While this information will be helpful towards determining suitability, it may also help to determine unsuitable sites. Maps of the injection well, area of review, surface waters, artificial penetrations, and faults can be viewed as an overview map of the project site. Information described on these maps, including plume direction and pressure front migration, should be accounted for during the delineation of the area of review and development of testing and monitoring. The detailed geology and hydrogeology is a collection of information that is broader but encompasses the specifics of the project site or area of review. Because this section does go into detail, I will describe only a few of those specifics. Demonstrating that the confining zones are free of faults or fractures. 
This will allow them maximum pressure and volumes without initiating any new faults or fractures. Porosity, permeability, and capillary pressure of the injection confining zones to determine storage capacity, modeling for plume and pressure front behavior. Utilizing geochemical data to determine the confining zone integrity and setting safe operational measures. Baseline geochemical data that can be used for water quality monitoring above the confining zones. Data synthesis for the demonstration of site suitability is broken down into understanding the facies analysis, anticipating heterogeneity of the porosity, permeability, and mineralogy in the injection and confining zones, and the associated effects of storage capabilities of the site. Structure of the injection and confining zones. This assessment will be crucial to determine the well is sited in an area that meets requirements. Compatibility of the CO2 stream. How is the injectate going to interact with the subsurface fluids and solids? Demonstration of storage capacity. Is the injection zone suitable enough to receive the anticipated volume of the injectate? Demonstration of confining zone integrity. Will the confining zone contain the carbon dioxide without risk of migration? And considerations for secondary confinement, if it's determined the initial zone does not meet all requirements. You may notice that there has been some overlap from this last section we reviewed, but again, the difference here is while the individual information is still important to gather, it's a synthesis of all the information that forms a comprehensive picture. The last but certainly not least breakdown of the guidance is the activities performed prior to well operation. Well logging confirms depths, thicknesses, lithology, and salinity at minimum. Core samples collected from the injection and confining zones provide information used to refine site characterization data. Characterization of the chemical and physical properties of the formation support the determination of the compatibility of the injectate with the formation fluids. Hydrogeology tests, such as pressure fall-off test, pump test, or injectivity test to verify the injectivity of the injection zone to support permit limits for injection rates and volumes. Now that we've gone through some of the requirements for the permit submittal for your class six well, let's consider some additional measures to protecting groundwater. Pre-existing data, taking advantage of existing hydrogeologic data or present water well data. As mentioned before, if it's determined the initial confining zone does not exhibit the properties for protection, an additional confining zone should be considered. Depending on the properties of the injection stream and the purification process, it may be required additional testing and monitoring for compatibility in the injection zone. And of course, there's always the financial responsibility, being able to continually fund for the duration of the project. Your site characterization surely isn't the only way to be proactive in protecting the groundwater with your class six well but you can continually be proactive throughout the entire course of your operational phase and post-injection phase, such as testing and monitoring, post-injection site care, periodic re-evaluations of the area of review, and being prepared for any emergency and remedial response. Finally, while the process of site characterization and permit submittal is a lengthy and tedious one, it's an integral part to continually protect the groundwater while working against the release of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Thanks, Lindsay. That was a good deep dive into the protection of our groundwater resources. Uh, thanks for weaving in Casey Garber's feasibility assessment webinar that was previously recorded. Lindsay and other members of the SES team have presented numerous topics on this series of mini webinars, and I'll invite you to check them out and stay tuned for more upcoming topics uh, that we're developing to address carbon dioxide and deep well injection. In the meantime, please feel free to reach out to Lindsay or for me or to me for more information or scan the QR code on this slide. On behalf of the SES carbon sequestration and deep well injection team, we thank you for tuning in today.